Income tax 2021-2022 reporting rental income expenses and losses part number two. Get ready to get refunds to the max diving into income tax 2021-2022. Most of this information can be found in Publication 527, Residential Rental Property Tax Year 2021, IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov, Income Tax Formula. We're focused on line one, income, but we would have a subschedule, basically an income statement with income and expenses. Expenses basically being deductions. The net then is what rolls in to line one, income of the income tax formula and eventually page one of the form 1040 this is the schedule e is basically the income statement schedule the supplemental income and loss we're focusing in on the rental real estate so we're continuing on here with limits on rental losses so when we have the losses with regards to any kind of losses you got to think the government is going to be more skeptical of the losses because the government wants to be your silent partner when you have income but like if you have a loss they don't want to pay you on the loss they don't want to allow you to deduct the loss against other types of incomes although you may be able to in some instances but you can see how they'd be a bit skeptical of the losses especially with the rental income because with rental income we're often not just engaging in that practice of rental property just to get the rental income we're also engaging in it because we might be hoping that the property goes up in value over time and then if we take losses I, I, on the property and then the increase in the property happens again the IRS could be more skeptical on rental property with regards to losses than possibly other businesses like service businesses for example so if you have a loss from your rental real estate activity two sets of rules may limit the amount of loss you can report on schedule e you must consider these rules in the order shown below both are discussed in this section so number one you've got the at risk rules these rules are applied first if uh, there is investment in your rental real estate activity for which you aren't at risk this applies only if the real property was placed in service after 1986 and then number two you've got the passive activity limits generally rental real estate activities are considered passive activities and losses aren't deductible unless you have income from other passive activities to offset them so in other words on the passive activity you're trying to basically uh, say that we're going to limit your passive activity losses and you have to wait until you have other income related to, to passive activity to take the losses as opposed to taking the losses against active activities such as say w2 income so however there are exceptions as we'll see so excess business loss limitations in addition to at-risk rules and passive activity limits excess business loss rules apply to losses from all non-corporate trades or businesses the business loss limitation is figured using form 461 after uh, you complete your schedule e any limitation on your loss resulting from these rules will not be reflected on your schedule e instead it will be added to your income on form 1040 and treated as a net operating loss that must be carried forward and deducted in a subsequent year so if you got a limitation on the loss then the question is well what happens at that point in time does the loss just go go away do i not get any benefit from it or do i get to roll it forward into a future period possibly and possibly take it against other uh kind of income and so on and so forth which is that's the that's the thing you would be thinking so if you got a loss you're gonna say okay i got a loss is the loss limited if the loss is limited do i lose the loss or do i get to carry the loss forward if you do get to carry the loss forward then it's nice like if you're a tax professional to be using the same tax software or in other words you've got a more complex return so if you were taking on a 2021 return for example for a new client you would probably want to take the full tax uh the tax return of the prior year enter it into your 2020 software so that you can mirror exactly what happened on the prior year tax return and then roll it forward in the software the software helping with these limitations and any kind of carry forward that would take place on uh, with the limitations so at risk rules what are they uh you may be subject to at risk rules if you have a loss from an activity carried on as a trader business or for the production of income and amounts invested in the activity for which you aren't fully at risk losses from holding real property other than a mineral property placed in service before 1987 aren't subject to the at-risk rules in most cases 
any loss from an activity subject to the at-risk rules is allowed only to the extent of the total amount you have at risk uh, in the activity at the end of the year. You are considered at risk in an activity to the extent of cash and the adjusted basis of other property you contributed to the activity and certain amounts borrowed for use in the activity. Any loss that is disallowed because of the at-risk limits is treated as a deduction from the same activity in uh, the next tax year. You can see publication 925 for discussion of at-risk rules. Find that on the IRS website, form 6198. Uh, if, uh, if you are subject to the at-risk rules, file form 6198. So a quick look at that form. So here's your form 6198 at risk uh, limitations. You can obviously look at uh, the instructions as well as the publication on the IRS website uh, for more information. So if you are subject to at risk, file form uh, 6198 with your tax return. So then we have the passive activity limits. In most cases, all rental real estate activities except those of certain real estate professionals discussed later are passive activities. So the real estate uh, was basically put into this category of being passive activities and so and there and that means they're going to be subject so when you think of passive activities you're basically thinking about those losses again if you have income if the passive activities don't really come into play because the IRS is happy to just take some of your income if there's income if there's losses then the IRS is skeptical they're saying hey it's a passive activity and you might have limitations then on the losses and have that general requirement of being able to kind of match the losses from passive activity to income from passive activity, not matching it up to income from non-passive activity, such as basically a W-2 type of income. That's the general rule. Now you can imagine that many people that worked in the real estate profession started to say, well, hey, wait a second, other people get to take, to get to take losses in their business, like any other business gets a loss. Why are we being, being uh, excluded from that? And so now you've got these kind of compromises that basically uh, took places. So you hear these terms like if you're a real estate professional into place and you might get some of the passive activities if you actively participate. So now you got these terms of active participation and real estate professional, which of course, then we have to define what that means because they could have different tax consequences. So for this purpose, a rental activity is an activity from which you receive income mainly for the use of tangible property rather than for services. So we're not, you know, if it was services, you'd be doing an active kind of thing. If you provide services, then of course you're doing something active and you're not basically just getting passive income from uh, the renting of the property. So for a discussion of activities that aren't considered rental activities, you can see rental activities in publication 925. Deductions or losses from passive activities are limited. You generally can't offset income other than passive income with losses from passive activity, nor can you offset taxes on income other than passive income with credits resulting from passive activities any excess loss or credit is carried forward to the next tax year so you're kind of limited you're kind of in the lane of passive activities with regards to taking advantage of your losses and and netting them out against income but you can't net them out against what's in the other lane of it type of income which is like uh, normal income like w-2 type of income but if you can't match your losses up against income you might be able to do it in the future rolling the loss forward to hopefully have passive income in the future that you can net your loss that you couldn't take before because it was passive to the income that you might have in future time frames. So exceptions to the rules for figuring passive activity limits for personal use of a dwelling unit and for rental real estate with active participation. So there's another key term, active participation. So there's an at least partial exception, but we'll discuss that later. So we've got now, is someone a real estate professional key term? Are they uh, an active participant? is going to be a key term that will come into play. So for a detailed discussion of these rules, you can see publication 925 to dig into that in more detail. So we're looking at real estate professionals now. So you got the real estate and now you're categorizing as a real estate professional. What does that key term mean? If you are a real estate professional, complete line 43 of Schedule E. So line 43 
of Schedule E. That's basically Schedule E, page number two. We're down here in uh, part number five, 43, reconciliation for real estate professionals. If you were a real estate professional, see instructions, enter the net income or loss you reported anywhere on Form 1040, Form 1040-SR, or Form 1040-NR from all rental real estate activities in which you materially participate under the passive activity rules. There's, there's the line that we're looking at. So you qualify as a real estate professional for the tax year if you meet both of the following requirements. This is going to be more stringent a requirement than basically actively participating, right? So you've got someone who's completely passive to someone who actively participates to someone who's a real estate professional. And you would think that if someone was completely passive, they would be most restrictive on being able to deduct their losses. If they are a real estate, if they were actively participating, they might get some, some capability, more capability. And then if they're a real estate professional, you would think they have a larger capacity possibly to be deducting some of their losses. So more than half of the personal services you perform in all trade or businesses during the tax year are performed in real property trades or businesses in which you materially participate. You perform more than 750 hours of services during the tax year in real property trades or businesses in which you materially participate. So if you qualify as a real estate professional, rental real estate activities in which you materially participate aren't passive activities. So now you can see that passive activity uh, is, is removed. So they're not passive anymore, which means you should be released from some of the restrictions on the losses, possibly being able to take those losses against uh, uh, other types of income because you're actively participating as a real estate professional and uh, in like W-2 income, for example. So for purposes of determining whether you mater materially participate in your rental real estate activities, each interest in rental real estate is a separate activity unless you elect to treat all your uh, interest in real estate as one activity. So in other words, if I looked at my Schedule E and I had multiple real estate activities here, I'd have to determine for each one whether I was actively participating or not, and that will have an impact on, on whether or not the losses could be uh, dedu deductible. You can see then the losses pulling over to, to the page one eventually of the Form 1040 in that instance, uh, or in that, in that example at least. So for purposes of determining whether you materially participate in your rental real estate activities, each interest in rental real estate is a separate activity unless you elect to treat all your interest in rental real estate as one activity. Don't count personal services you perform as an employee in real property trades or businesses unless you are a 5% owner of your employer. So if you're an employee, then that's something different generally unless this exception applies than you know doing your own rental property that you would be reporting on the schedule e so you are a five percent owner in your own or a cons or considered to own more than five percent of your employer's outstanding stock or capital or profit interest so don't count your spouse's personal services to determine whether you meet the requirements listed earlier to qualify as a real estate professional. However, you can count your spouse's participation in an activity in determining if you materially participate. Real property trades or businesses. A real property trade or business is a trade or business that, that does any of the following with real property, develops or uh, redevelops it, constructs or reconstructs it, acquires it, converts it, rents or leases it, uh, operates or manages it, brokers it. So choice to treat all interests as one activity. So now if you have multiple real estate, you, the option was do you treat them all differently and apply this test to each one of them or do you, do you treat them as one? So if you were a real estate professional and had more than one rental real estate interest during the year, you can choose to treat all your interest as one activity. Uh, you can make this choice for any year that you qualify as a real estate professional. If you forego making the choice for one year, you can still make it for a later year. If you make the choice, it is binding for the tax year you make it and for any later year that you are a real estate professional. So once you make the choice, then it becomes binding. So it looks like if you if you uh, d don't make the choice and you're, you're then then you can continue with that, you still have the option to make it. But once made, 
then you're basically locked in, it looks like, is the general idea. So you want to consider that choice carefully. So the, this is true even if you aren't a real estate professional in any, inter, in any intervening year. For that year, the exception for real estate professionals won't apply in determining whether your activity is subject to the passive activity rules. See the instructions for Schedule E for information about making this choice. So if you want to, you might want to do that, check into it, dive into it in a bit more detail uh, because it, it's, it could lock you in. So material participation. Generally, you materially participate in an activity for the tax year if you were involved in its operations on a regular, continuously, and substantial basis during the year. For details, you can see publication 925 or the instructions for Schedule C. Participating spouse. So now you got the spouse involved because you're joint in, the, in, 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 in essence. So if you are married, determine whether you materially participate in an activity by also counting any participation in the activity by your spouse during the year. Do this even if your spouse owns no interest in the activity or file, files a separate return for the year. Form 8582. You may have to complete Form 8582 to figure the amount of any a passive activity loss for the current tax year for all activities and the amount of the passive activity loss allowed on your tax return. So here's a quick look at the form 8582 passive activity loss limitations. Passive activity loss limitations. Okay, so then on your return, C form 8582 not are not required later in this chapter to determine if you must complete Form 8582. If you are required to complete Form 8582 and are also subject to the at-risk rules, include the amount for, uh, from Form 6198, line 21, deductible loss in column B of Form 8582, Worksheet 1 or 2, as required. Exception for personal use of dwelling unit. Uh, if you use the rental property as a home during the year any income deductions gain or loss allocable to such use is not to be taken into account for purposes of the passive activity loss limitation instead follow the rules uh, explained in chapter 5.